Chris theorizing case file 275. Traversing the stars. I forgot. I instantly forgot all the names we just said. <laughs> I, which one, Dan, which one did you say? I, I said a couple, so I didn't. <laughs> Was what was the first one you said? It doesn't matter what the name is, all right? I know. Yeah. Wacky Space Racer. It doesn't matter. I think wacky ra- yeah, okay. It doesn't yeah. fucking matter. Right, wacky Racers I... comes to mind right now. <laughs> Today, wacky racers. you know, we, we've been lining up a lot of interviews for, you know, uh, with guests and stuff. So, we're you know, we're taking a little week off. Having, some, having a couple brewskis with the boys. Uh, I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. And we're going to be talking just theorizing bullshit about traversing the stars. How would we get across the galaxy? How would we jump dimensions? And fuck them aliens. Get yeah. them aliens. That's yeah, that's that's the end goal. <laughs> you gotta always remember when we're when we're thinking about how we can go to the stars, the end game is clapping cheeks. Right? So that's it's humans crazy. need that's they need, we need a purpose to get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hybridization. That's fucking. Yeah, that, we gotta it, save our species. It, yeah. It's our pot of gold. It's the, it's the James T. Kirk protocols. Like, <laughs> yeah, fuck some green different ladies. alien everywhere that's you go. Do. Speaking of James T. Kirk, like how many? Like they obviously had treaties that that's probably a no no. I would imagine to just like have all these like interspecies, interspecies. erotica. I don't, it, well, aside from aside from the Prime Directive, I mean, there's not really. I mean, long as they're they're already like a, a spacefaring race. I mean, you guys can do it. Fair game. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. How the guy not, has you draw the you draw the line at spacefaring. Well, yeah, they, it's like space. well, you're not supposed yeah. to. Come, well, the prime directive dictates that you can't you can't like interfere, interfere. with a species that is that is pre like warps. I think it's pre warp technology essentially. Uh, like you're not you're not supposed to interfere with them and, until they've reached a certain technological level to bring them into the federation or whatever. But when they jump stars, they're fair game. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. That seems weird because it's like like your race just starts jumping space and then you're getting manipulated by James T. Kirk to bang your women. And he's like, Yeah, where's wow. your whole planet? Advanced that's advanced uh, Federation medical technology. I mean, Con- yeah, you can't run you can't space aid spades. <laughs> All right, space aids is gonna get you. Saw those nanobots um, he's got carried in those blood. Yeah, nano machine, son. Yeah. Oh, God, son. Oh. Attacking every virus. <laughs> that's interesting. That'd be that'd be like I feel like some sort of sexually transmitted disease would be the first thing a human gets. Hey, maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's where fucking AIDS came from. Fucking aliens. <laughs> aliens. We don't really know. Antonio Villabaris and his sex jelly. Aliens, you know, they're they're thinking the same thing we're talking about. Why they need a reason to come to Earth. And that's their reason. Bang. Clap cheeks. Clap cheeks. Well, that's fuck everybody's getting probed. Yeah. That one dude that paints pictures about it. We talked about him. Oh, that's oh true. Yeah. That's right? That's true. <laughs> He's got a lot of those paints. Or we'll have time on his hands. What was that guy's name again? I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to. Anyway, anyways, today we're just theor- theorizing about different space ways <laughs> different ways you can get space aids. And how you can jump through hypothetically or theoretically or just straight out science fiction. How how do we get through the galaxy, through stars, yeah, space? How do we get there? How do we get through? <laughs> how do we pe- bypass the insane straight line distance Distances. in a timely manner and get to where we need to go without taking ten thousand light years to get? Because yeah. well, right now, like we just had the. I mean, what was it a week ago? Where the the SpaceX it was going to be the like the heaviest rocket ever yeah. launched, like the biggest rocket, and it failed. Like even that, even like our yeah. biggest rocket that we have today. Is gonna fucking take forever. Like it, it, to, to get to the nearest, like habitable zone, habitable star. Like this is not how we're going to ensure the human race spread across the universe. We need to figure out some sort of alternative method. So it's like when we start to look at extraterrestrials and stuff, and what are what are what are they doing? Um, it 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 seems weird to me because I one of the things that I was was kind of thinking about when we were when we were talking about doing this one is that it's 
I guess you would have to have, well, I, I guess depending the alloys, I guess, while I'm saying it out loud, but I was thinking if something, it's easy once you're in space to have something lightweight, you can probably have it more fragile, but then to go from space to land, it's like, then you're having already issues because you're like, all right, well now it's got to be a little more durable or you can't fucking melt on, on entry. Hmm. Like there, there's all these problems uh, with that. And, and not only that, just organic life just doesn't do well. Like we start to fall apart or bodies all fucking, fucking apart. Can't, can't hang around so like what do you think what do you think is the most viable right now way that we could traverse the stars that's maybe in our grasp we'll get we'll get crazy later yeah, but what do you think is in the closest it's, it's in definitely the, in the not realm burning of... fossil fuels out of a rocket that's definitely yeah. not what the ets are doing yeah has been the as has been our pretty much our, our prerogative for the last like you know almost century now of of propulsion technology is just like putting bigger rockets with more fuel in them more explosions uh, bigger bigger battery rockets that's all it's pretty much been uh for the last things but you know we have uh, there's a lot of exciting technologies that actually have cropped up in the last couple of years um that we've got you know on the uh, on the horizon uh one of the ones that i came across and i read about this one there's kind of one i remember reading about in a science fiction novel that re- resembled this but there's one called it's fucking called the rotating detonation engine which is like if you, needed a cra- if you needed a crazy that's from you- america yeah. <laughs> if you needed like a more dangerous sounding engine i don't think you could really find one at this one but um, the germans could definitely come up with a more dangerous sound engine. <laughs> everything they all their names are dangerous um but yeah so essentially this one's designed it's just it's just like a series of explosions in like a in like a barrel like a circle thing and it's just like it it like produces its power but it it actually uses less fuel than most of today's like modern propulsion systems and you're just like constant um which is there's there's another one that i remember reading about where it's essentially like you'd have like a craft that would just kind of like drop out like little nuclear explosives like behind it as it would go just use like riding the waves of the nuclear explosions just keep to keep accelerating uh to like you know pretty much like you know close to not like half the speed of light whatever keep, yeah, something like that forward yeah you just like you just ride these explosions just like <laughs> nuclear exp- you just dropping nukes out the back and just like pushing you forward which i always See, thought was a pretty what fucking r- crazy was way would to be move. something that we would do but then eliminate because that takes you to half the speed of light but then it's like if you get once you're in space and say if you have this heavy craft once you get it moving it's like i think that getting it going at a certain speed is hard then speeding up probably i mean I'm not a scientist, but I figure like, I'm like, it probably isn't that too hard to get it to go faster. So then I was thinking about light sail technology. Like if we were riding these nuclear blasts and then it's like, once you get to speed and you're like, okay, we're fucking, we're out of nukes, boys. You just spread the light sail. And we, we talked about it on, a, I think the last space news or a couple of space news ago about having some sort of uh, like laser that fucking from earth that just fires in space in one of the, what's the zone where they don't drift away again. I can't. Oh, the can't range points. Yeah, and then uh, just continually fires laser bursts into this light sail to to speed it up. Right once you once you get to that initial initial the speed, because ma- I have the amount of energy that- though, you might as well just use the sun at that point. Like the, um, the farther uh, farther away you are, like that, the stronger your fucking pulse. Buddy, have you seen our from- laser technology? These green laser pointers are getting crazy. All right, <laughs> another five ten years, right? You're gonna be taking down planes with these things, chopping them right in half. No, but the, the so this detonation engine is pretty much just a more it's just a more explosive version of what we're doing. Pretty much. Uh, so just, just like <laughs> just more dangerous explosions in a rotating. Sounds, it sounds a lot crazier. Yeah. Supersonic combustion that uses more power while using less fuel. The thing yeah. about accelerating to that speed though, say you get to like half light speed. I think yeah, you can get there. Then you get to like the solar system you're trying to go through, and then how do you slow it down? Like you're going you need just as much energy to push you back to go back to slow back down to a point where you could like get caught in uh, gravity of the planet you're trying to get to. I, I never even, that never even passed my like you, mind. You'd be fucking going, <laughs> so, you're going so, so you get to up, up like half light speed, let's say, so you can get to the next solar system in like five or six years. Let's just you would say. have to have enough fuel to stop. And then you need something to be able to propel you backwards in order to, cause you got, yeah, there's you, just no need fucking, so you, you just need front nukes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd have to re- you'd have to reach a certain point. Uh, there, there would be a certain point they'd probably calculate out to be like, this is where we need to start our deceleration burn. Yeah. And it's like this is like, and it's like, 
it would be like hundreds years. of thousands of miles. Yeah, yeah. From it'd, like it'd where probably you take were. a yeah, it'd probably take a year to speed up and then a year to slow back down. Yeah, pretty like much, it take forever. Could be something like that. So n- not not the ideal way to still to get to the next. I mean, you would probably essentially. I mean, um, one of one of the more uh, accurate uh, what some people would say so like more of the accurate depictions of like space travel and and the stuff that <laughs> that technology would kind of put the strain on us is like the expanse right and they kind of talk about um you'd essentially like you'd want to keep your acceleration you know and we just talked about it the, th- the kind of strain that space travel puts on the human body you'd want you want your acceleration to pretty much resemble earth gravity is what you want so was it like one point 9.8 meters per second or something like that um like our, our gravity, you want, you want that to remain. So it doesn't put too much strain on your body. Um, you could probably go a little less or a little bit more, uh, than that. And then when you decelerate, you'd still want to maintain that thing. You know, you just flip, you you go one way with the ship and then you just kind of flip it around and then you just like, and then you would just start your deceleration mm, burn, but right. trying to keep it at that acceleration in an emergency, you could probably do that. And that's why, you know, they have in other, not just the expanse, but other, um, other sci-fi things where it's like that you have your deceleration couches and stuff or like your crash couches that you put in. Like if it's an emergency and you have to slow down really fast in a, in a short amount of time, uh, you need something to compensate for that. So you don't you know crush all your bones and get like <laughs> yeah. slammed into yeah. a bulkhead and just like well, crushed under all that gravity. That, that's an interesting point. I never thought about that either, that if you're, if you are traveling and something you would, you'd want something where to keep the human body, condition it would be gravity so it would be affected by that so then it's like would it be it would probably make more sense if we were going to send like physical humans that they would be in some sort of stasis so you didn't have to do that because that seems like a a lot of issue but even then even like a loose body you know what i mean floating in space i imagine there's effects that even like someone in stasis but i guess you could pressurize pods you have to have to yeah some type of pressurized pod has but have to be but if you were in a pressurized pod wouldn't you still feel the effects of like you stopping and accelerating you put them in some kind of like gel or something like yeah some type of some some kind of (laughs) but yeah you probably pickle them (laughs) yeah so like i would imagine like we could go through the fucking the cause like what happens to the human body in space but like i would imagine if we are traveling space we're gonna be traveling for long durations of time right Mm -hmm. at this point so in my head it would make more sense to actually like start addressing how we could adapt to these situations right because then like it's something that humans can do we've done it we've granted we've done it on our own planet we haven't done it you know extraterrestrially yet but like you look at you look at the fucking sherpas right and the epo and you know the i forget where where those guys who are those guys that can dive to the bottom of the fucking Oh, the pro oh, guys or whatever, the island, right? sponge island divers island or whatever. People, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Like we've we've seen the human body adapt to like harsh living uh, conditions. We've done that. So, you know, it usually takes I'd imagine thousands and thousands of years to make those adaptations. But like we're forgetting one major thing is like we are developing technology now to literally fucking gene edit. We could crisper our way out of we could crisper of our travel. way out of these issues, right? Like, because we're learning, like, with, with um, Jesus, what's his name? Um, who's the dude that with the twin, Kelly, right? The mm-hmm. the twin that was yeah. in, at the International Space Station for over mm-hmm. a year, right? Oh yes, um, what what's his name Kelly again? Chris um, Kelly. Scott, is it Chris? Scott, Scott Kelly. Kelly, Scott okay. Kelly, and then he's got that twin brother, Mark Kelly, and so after Scott Kelly was in, at the International Space Station for over a year, when he came back, they checked, you know, him and his identical brother is like, they basically did all in, complete a medical analysis, and uh, like uh, Scott was shorter, he was nearsighted, uh, lighter, and then he developed uh, some issues with heart disease. Like we can go, obviously, like your muscles atrophy while you're in space while your heart's a muscle that atrophies as well it actually even changes uh shape due to the fact that you're circulating a lot less blood volume which is super interesting but anyways so you see all these fucking changes that are happening in space we can kind of anticipate that now that we've seen what a snapshot of that looks like over a long period of time and we can start working on maybe getting the human body to adapt to those situations 
Yeah, because it's a, it's a yeah, it's a wholly not? alien envi- environment. Like even though we talk about like yeah, the humans here on Earth have adapted to a number of different environments, it's still kind of on relatively. The, it's still kind it's of still relatively Earth. the same. It, like not relatively the same, but it's just like small little uh, changes in in that things. But like something like space, where it's like the, there's no, like no gravity or cl- no to little gravity, microgravity uh, environments, where you have things like like you said, like he, he became nearsighted because your eyes like the you know the, 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 the back of they... your eye the back of your eye flattens due to the right. gravity yeah. yeah which is bizarre and you like it's fucking crazy too so supposedly over, like each month you can lose up to one percent of your muscle mass uh you can lose 1.5 of your bone distance densities because so basically like due to the strain of living on earth and gravity are you um, saying i'm built for space travel no you're not you're too big boned oh, because you you, oh. that's because so basically what happens is you like your body natural your body naturally uh, your bones go through osteoclast class which is like the breakdown of your bones and the calcium goes into your uh, bloodstream and then you get osteoblast which produces new bone but while you're in while you're in space it can com- it completely slows down the osteoblast the production of new bone but the osteoclast still happens the breakdown of the bone so basically you're getting like i'd say like advanced stages of fucking osteoporosis in a very short period of time in space yeah you don't, you don't have the resistance of gravity which you're always fighting against even though you don't feel it your body you're just built that way you're born you grow up you're always fighting gravity so that's just your body's just your body needs that so the only other way in space i guess to get rid of that like in sci-fi they always have the spinning craft so if you can replicate that spin on a big enough scale then you would technically be standing against this artificial gravity just get everybody on just serious courses of fucking hgh (laughs) body's just working overtime well that would (laughs) apparently you can't it's hard like they've even tested doing like rigorous exercise and it still doesn't necessarily offset these effects. Which no, is they, they have to on the space station. They work out like four hours every. And day. it's still like what happened yeah. with Kelly. Like he still came back, fucking atrophied, and that's crazy. <clears throat> so, like thinking about that, like if you were going to have some long term mission, say whatever you're gonna fifty years, sixty years, a lifetime on a, on a journey to a next star system, and you were gonna do a gravity route. Would it make maybe make sense to you guys to to do just what you said, like to have some sort of HGH and maybe instead of replicating Earth's gravity, you just up the gravity just a little bit. You're like, it's not so going to be too Goku. much. Goku, yeah, yeah, yeah. Goku and Vegeta train, right? You know yeah. what I mean? Where you're Capsule like, core, you're going to Capsule core technology. Going to yeah, you're not going to notice, but like your, mo- your movements are going to be a little more lumbered. But that lumbering motion is going to naturally keep your body mass up. Also, we're going to pump you full of fucking juice, horse semen. What? That's weird. That you <laughs> I'm not sure that. That's, I don't think I don't that's. Know. I don't, I don't think, think that's an approved medical procedure. Yeah. Semen, I don't that's think that's, okay. that's exactly. Doesn't, yeah, we don't and, recommend that. Where are you going to keep those eating, horses in space? Well, what did I mean, what did that uh, what did that what meat guy do? Wasn't that he was just eating testicles? Uh, that's how he liver. got that jacked. He was, I think he was eating testicles. He was he was eating testicles too, though I believe, and liver raw liver and yeah, just. I'm Turns out it was all a sham. bunch of HGH, yeah. yeah. And a well, lot it's not necessarily a sham. He was on gear as well, but liver. He was is great on twelve thousand a month of gear. No, the sham was though. Yeah. Like if you eat like me, you look like me. He yeah, didn't, and he always sad. denied the yeah, PEDs. Yeah. That was the sham. If you Nobody, eat like him, you will have the human same body problem. does not look yeah. that way without performance enhancing drugs. That's just. A fact. But all of our astronauts would look that way, which is awesome. Yeah, imagine, right. imagine you're getting like you like humans stepping off on another planet, and every single person's just. Dude, that's that's w- <laughs> that's exactly what happened in Prometheus. That's why those guys are so jacked. Yeah. Well, it's they like show up, every they show up just fucking yoked when they get to the new planet. Every single fucking astronaut should look like a '90s era fucking Marvel character. Like Super even era. like Professor yeah. X just well, yeah. fucking yoked in his chair with like giant calves and stuff. And you're like, oh, well, yeah. When you sense. step off I'm the when it. you step off the ship and like greet the aliens, you want to be the best of the best. You want to be fucking huge. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Uh, uh you want you want blood sport uh van damme physique not a short but yeah, taller, yeah. But. <laughs> yeah i gotta be taller well, you might be taller cop, he, he might be taller in space though right yeah. i mean you can't that's just so we like now like that's in the realm of like that's a, the, it does seem like we're gonna the natural progression for us like even going to mars and stuff is that it's 
the start of it is going to be slow moving unless we move to like some sort of AI that we just drift out there, which I could see us definitely doing in the near future too on one of these uh, next probes where we're just like uh, AI, there you go. And you're adrift in space. See you later. We just send it off. And it comes back in a million years to enslave us for sending it adrift. Right. Um, well, we what we got is that we just got to advance our tech. We got to get into some type of plasma propulsion or that brings us to the next on our list, which I never heard of before, before Dan put in the notes. The Helicon Double Layer Thruster. Yeah, that's a good one. Fucking awesome. The Helicon <laughs> Double Layer Thruster, which is a, uh, yeah, it, it, this is a pretty cool one that they, uh, I think they they validated its, its kind of like uh, its feasibility and they kind of put together like a prototype. Um, it sounds like it's made, just like in the last couple of years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's a type of prototype plasma thruster propulsion system that basically works. Um, it, it, they inject gas into like a tube and then they run radio signals around it. Essentially, they have these two like uh, antenna that just you know, like they, they, they have a like radio frequency AC power go through there and it charges the gas and electromagnetically ionizes it. And then it pushes it out through like one layer and then they push it through another layer and then it comes out the back all purple and cool and fucking oh, rad. Buddy, that um, makes perfect sense. It's like, so we make our fucking ship and then we got our Jack dude fucking flying it who looks exactly yeah. like Vin Diesel. And then to initiate the Hellions, they got a little red button. And then he says family and he hits the red button. It's just like fucking nitrous shooting out purple. And then we're in space. <laughs> I think that's the plot of fast 10. Fast X. There's fucking fast 10 X. of them already. I think so. Or it'll be fat. No, it's oh. when we get the fast triple X. X, X, 30. <laughs> oh man, it's like crosses over Xander or whatever his name is in Triple Well, it's, they just start the cl- they, they're brothers? They either, <laughs> they're long lost brothers? They either clone Whoa. Vin Diesel or they put him in stasis and they just keep popping him out. No, yeah, but no, because remember the on Xander the or whatever, the guy from Triple X? Yeah, on the count of three, <laughs> name your favorite three. One, two, three, family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they stop fighting. I oh did no! This for my a, family. A stasis, a stasis. Vin Diesel pulled out a stasis, like like a, like a demolition man style. Pulls out and meets cloned John Vin Martin. Diesel. No, meets yeah. cloned. Well, they like they've been cloning. Is, Zan- now. is it Xander? Who is his name from Triple X? Yeah, isn't it Xander or something? Xander yeah, Cage. Xander. Xander Kane, no, Xander remember. Cage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so then, then then they team up and then they Have they to. go and Well, they, no, they fight at first like Brayden said, but then right. they realize their mom has they're, the same name because they're fucking clones. No, well, yeah. All so they stop fighting. Right. No. Well, but their mom has the same name because it's like because they're, cause the same, same mom. Because they are yeah. family. <laughs> that's what I just said. I mean, they are, yeah. Shit. Yeah, so that's we put good. it all together. It's tough. That's good. That's good. God damn, call Vin Diesel right now. <laughs> so that's that's Helicon Double Layer Thrusters. <laughs> Buddy, that's the name of the movie. Helicon Double Diesel Double Layer. I mean, yeah, those things like pop out of the it's back of his freaking his his car and just like oh, that'd be rad as fuck. Uh, oh. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like we said, like there's there's tons of stuff going on right now where it's like they're, they're doing these things. But most of these technologies that sound really cool and it's like, yes, they will get us to certain places. And yes, they're producing more thrust with less fuel or things like that. It's like they're still only getting us so fast. Like you're not you're not really doing anything that we haven't kind of already seen. That's just you're just going a little bit faster. or You're pushing a little bit further, but anything we're not getting the kind of stuff that we would imagine that extraterrestrials are utilizing right now. Uh, you know, namely faster than light travel FTL. It's something, it's yeah, not, something we're to, not to shorten that bridge. Right. We're still missing. We're still missing that piece or, you know, we haven't, we haven't figured out the, the math yet or whatever you want to say, uh, whatever that integral part, um, if it exists, we got to um, somehow alter space time in our favor to get some. Well, and that's we're we're thinking of travel, as a like a to b kind of thing right like we're linear travel whereas like we're gonna have to think of something that is either fast than that or out of our like concept of realization right now for technology wise and and yeah and there's there's ideas out there of essentially like kind of like how we would get there i think one of the more popular one is like the the al cubier drive uh that they that they talk about which essentially is like 
it's kind of, I mean, this is kind of how the warp, like the warp drives and kind of Star Trek kind of work where it's like you would surround your spaceship in like a kind of bubble, like an energy bubble. And then you would kind of um, like you would warp the space around the ship. You wouldn't really push the ship like the ship isn't accelerating to the speed of light. You're just moving the space around the ship. And as you create these waves, your your little bubble would ride on the waves and therefore being able to accelerate faster than the, you know, potentially the faster than the speed of light. Uh, we see it on uh, that work. Yeah. It's like we see it on the field? gimbal. Remember, we seen on the gimbal video it shows like a little a warping field around it. So, so that's what they're using. Oh, so we already have the technology. Well, so the gim- the gimbal make- could be an ET. Let's let's be realistic here. If if there's something, nah, visiting, the gimbal's us. It would make sense that their concept of space travel, based on their ability to enter our atmosphere and not destroy their ships, it's like their way of traveling has to be like absolutely completely different than our <laughs> way of traveling like yeah, so that would would that work as a force field then it would negate the effects of i would imagine of like centrifugal force and anything that would pull on the ship so like yeah the the so yeah well the, like maybe that's how these objects you, you know do the fast up downs and move you know seemingly um you know defy what would pancake a human into the back wall uh, that's how they're, they're doing but we're these just we're things. editing their genes, so they're just mushmen. <laughs> boneless. <laughs> they don't boneless. have bones. To, they don't have bones to mush. Yeah, yeah they're jelly people. Just, <laughs> they're jelly people in an exoskeleton. That's what yeah. it is. <laughs> well, you it's just like those you, fucking those those renderings of like a human being needed to survive a fucking car crash. Like have you seen yeah. those? That kind of looks like yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's like fuck yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, they turn you into mush and then you just get cloned at the end. Like they just, CRISPR pops out and just like clones you and puts you back together as you, after the, after the trip. Well, that's a, Dan, that's an interesting thing. Like sending ships and then like, if you have, like we are starting to 3D print like food and organic material. Like could that technology get good enough where, you know, they have your brain mapped and they just 3D print you when you get there? You're well, just better like, yet, <laughs> why don't they 3D print you a fucking exoskeleton and you yeah. just like slide, you slither into it because you're a little mush man. <laughs> that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. The full exoskeleton. And then, yeah. Well, that's the, yeah. Um, yeah, that's one of those things. That that's kind of like, like Independence know, Day, isn't it? If you can't, if you can't get the body yeah. there and essentially, I mean, you could technically like if you if we had the technology to suspend your consciousness or copy your consciousness or however you want to do it and just store those like you'd basically i mean it's too risky I'll, I'll I'll able, like, well it's like altered carbon style like you put everybody's little conscious on like a little tiny like in nigh indestructible puck and then you would load those on the ships and you'd ship them out to wherever you want to go and once you get there like the bo- like the bodies are already 3d printed and they just slot you into a new body and, and there you go and then you walk around in your new body and then when you Um, yeah then your android body experiences this new planet they unplug that memory stick it flies back to earth you plug it into your human consciousness and you've experienced everything your android experienced on that planet you don't actually have to go anywhere that's pretty well now we're getting into total recall why go anywhere send an android you just just simulate it (laughs) because you might see a lady with three boobs it'd be fucking awesome well, it's a little different than the simulation because technically you are sending yourself I guess, an, yeah. an Android. I mean, that's av- that's Avatar, <laughs> kind of. Well, you you would design a body that is that is adapted to the the planet that you're going to. I mean, that's the the kind of idea in, in Avatar is like they you know you have a native species and you create like a well, template that, based and, on that. And, uh, and what's then, the 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 day the Earth stood still or whatever too. Right, like they bring like it's like a human egg or whatever, and then the guy comes out. Well, oh, is it that they, one? They they, they like birth. And oh, they, are you talking about? Yeah. They, they, is that they the Keanu? Are you talking about the Keanu Reeves? Yeah, I've never seen. Well, I've never the seen fucking Keanu. egg, and it's the gobbledygooper that comes out. They they born they like bor- born or they birth an alien on Earth with an egg yeah. with an ET consciousness and power. Yeah. Because so if you're born here, world. then you can exist here. Yeah. Cause like that's the other thing that is like you know we would bring up like that like fucking I don't I don't think we're ever gonna be like hey look at this perfect Earth take off your spacesuit boys <laughs> breathe no. that somebody's sweet, gonna sweet air they gotta have somebody's gonna try it well I mean <laughs> that's, that's how that's how humans have learned everything we've ever learned is someone yeah. just had to do something and die from it yeah. people go don't do that. 
Yeah, don't, don't, no, do, don't, do, don't that. do that. Don't, don't eat, eat that. that. Don't touch mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Don't do yeah, that. Yeah, but imagine if you're the first guy that does it and it works out. You're fucking, you're the god. You're the king. God. Listen, you're the there's a whole god. diving chart. There's a whole diving chart that you can read when you're going underwater to see how long you can go. And basically those lines are met. Like anything below that line is like someone died and they were like, and just that's the safe line right there. That's the that's, number. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I mean, it's a touch on an interesting point because it's like at that point, I mean, the first people who are going to be out into space are going to be your scientists, your astronauts, people who are uh, fairly competent in like scientific method and and those approaches and safety measures that will go with it. And then once you get to the point where it's like ultimate diaspora or whatever, where it's just everybody who's cobbled together a spaceship and anybody can get on top of one and, you know, whatever, you can send out people big dumbs like just get on board and everybody's like yeah uh you know once you get to those that point and it's just like yeah i think you'll have a ton of people just doing like landed on planets and like if, if that becomes feasible you're just people just landed on planets and being like look here what i can do you know hold my hold my space beer and <laughs> you know they'll, they'll have like um, fucking yeah oi this oi this guy he's got the the free breath hold record on the on this planet he took his helmet <laughs> off for f- four minutes and held his yeah. breath yeah no helmet on exposed to the elements I'll, like, I'll give you 20 space bucks cut out mid oi oi well it, because we'll be so blended by then you'll have That's all fair, accents yeah. That's okay. Much Give like, you uh, what's 30 space Alice? bucks to eat this weird looking mushroom that I found <laughs> growing yeah. out of here and this, this red grass area. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I'd find that, yeah, that, that'd be, but then that is part of exploration kind of. It's just like, yeah, like you guys said, that's like people just kind of doing things and, you know, the human the human curiosity factor where it's just going to be like, yeah, but eventually there will become a point where it's just like normal everyday, you know, when space travel becomes everyday ubiquitous or something like that, if we ever get to that point and you have uh, people just who aren't exactly qualified to, <laughs> to kind of just do stuff. They're like, yeah, this plan is fine. Like it, it's, it's normal and they can just land there and adapt to it and, and whatever, but it's going to be, uh, that'll be an interesting time when you can just hop a space freighter and just be like, yep. All right. We're going to this place. We don't really know if this planet's safe or all that nut, but it's got breathable, somewhat breathable atmosphere. I don't know. It's like, you might need some gene therapy or you have to wear some kind of small rebreather when you're outside, I assume, or something like that. But yeah. And then you're just kind of like, go <laughs> off. Good luck. <laughs> well, and, and that's crazy to think because what you said is like, when we get to like everyday space and something that was like, made me think about the next point there is like we could potentially you know we've talked about it on various spaces various episodes about like you know potentially building these giant spacecrafts out in space because lifting off these huge uh crafts from earth is unfeasible so we build these crafts these mega structures in space already and then travel so potentially sending groups of human on just generational voyages where we're just like you know this is going to take three or four generations to get to the destination and there's going to be you know two or three generations of humans that live and die on the ship on the way and it's just like this is the life they will know and it'll be just a, a sacrifice you just like send it out there and just just let it drift drift its way right because to me that also does seem that it might be the safest route <laughs> just like slow and steady baby of like you know, you don't have to worry about anything impacting it. Like, you, you, you're going slow enough where it's like you can make calculations. You've got scanners and stuff picking up, like, what's coming be going, in your... You still wouldn't be going slow by any... Not way. not slow, but, like, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not crawling 20 kilometers. It's not a school zone. <laughs> you're a your hummet. But you, you, just something where it's going gonna, it's gonna to take generational travel. Like, you know, like, get rid of the space flight all the way. We just, we just have humans that live in space. Yeah, if if we could figure out artificial gravity and the effects of space faring long terms on people through like gene, yeah, gene manipulation or whatever, whatever we come up with, then yeah, then we could do it off some type of like nuclear, like long powered spacecraft, space travel, where you're just slowly going. You're like, okay, we're going to Alpha Centauri. How many light years is that? It's not that far. Ten ten light years. All right, so it's going to take uh, you know two hundred years of this technology so yeah you you come up with a way to recycle water and create your own atmosphere grow your own food 3d print your food what a weird life though yeah 
I mean, you you're on a cru- to- you're on a ba- you're like on a bad cruise ship. Well, there's got to be no other years. choice. There has to be no other choice. Who the fuck's gonna want to do that? Miserable. We have yeah, to see the, would, we have yeah. to see the doom of the planet coming and planet. yeah, you'd have there'd have to be no it, other fucking. Choice. It would take a certain type of. That's where it, I think a lot of. Uh, a lot of kind of sci-fi writers take some inspiration and like it would, it would maybe take like a religious aspect like to, to motivate a a kind of people to be like with enough dedication to kind of be like, yeah, we're going to get on a spaceship for a hundred years and take that journey. Drink that fucking um, Kool-Aid. And, and go uh, to, to do this, you know, our, our, Space. Our deity told us that we need to head to the second star to the left and keep straight on till morning. <laughs> and, well, maybe uh, it's, maybe you're going up. there to maybe you're going there to meet them. Maybe that's where they are. Yeah, that too. Maybe you fucking and Anunnaki, you know, you're going to go visit them. Somehow they get a whole bunch of money because they get a number of celebrities to no go taxes. with their. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they you know. Uh, yeah, that's another consideration that uh, to think about is like who's who's footing the bill for uh, for interstellar travel because it, it, it is it, would, enor- it is enormously expensive yeah. <laughs> to do these Elon things. Musk. It would make sense to me that an endeavor like this, where you're going to send a generational ship, that it's something's it's you're like the days on Earth are numbered, numbered. yeah, numbered. And we have to go because then I could see it as like a pooling effort where you just like you're like everyone is doing this and we're only going to send the elite and a couple peasants to, you know, do housekeeping. Uh, (laughs) Maybe we can get on in some housekeeping. Dan, you worked in the Navy. You can you can turn to turn some wrenches, right? Yep. Yep. No problem. (laughs) And, uh, you know, that's the only way that I could see a ship like that being made and. Is, is something something really bad's happening? Um, I, not necessarily. I mean, like I said, like it could be a something like it could. I, I just also don't know if like generational travel is like the the way to go because it's like even if you do that, it's like just the way that technology advances is there's a really good chance that it's like by the time they get there, it's like we've already developed a, a space we're, drive and there's people have the been next, yeah people have been there the for twenty thing. years already and they're like hey oh. what's up we thought we'd just meet you here <laughs> but okay well that's an interesting thing too where it's like if you send a ship and you're like hey we're gonna send you guys out but no because we're gonna work on this like we're hoping to uh, by the time you guys get there we're hoping to have colonized the planet for 50 years and have the the ground workings done by the time your ship gets there. yeah like you say like all right yeah so we, we, you know that generational ship that's launched out there is taking 100 years and like within that 50 years after that we developed some quantum leap in propulsion technology and terraforming technology and by the time they get there it's like there's people been there already yeah. 70 <laughs> years and you're like okay like everything is terraformed and and ready to go we've already established space capitalism and you're like all right great <laughs> get to work see, here's your broom I can see you having some big <laughs> issues too with the generational ship of like if you have different generations of lived the ship of people like when you're getting there they're like we're not leaving the ship the you ship might. is safe we like the ship we know the ship ship is home. i love the ship that's all they've known yeah right? all they've known. So they're like yeah. like it would be like a big unknown like we're going to know what's going to happen on that ship Someone's going to start like a new religion and then they're going to become God. And then the ship, like they own the ship. That ship is their creation and are going to brainwash all these people on the Buddy, way to the planet. It'd and be like Lord of, Lord, of the, Lord, of, Lord of the Flies. That's what would happen. If a like, multi-generational ship, you would have some fucking... I bet you it would have some interesting things transpire in a three-generational ship. It'd be fucking wild. I mean, yeah, like maybe 200, 300 years. Like if stuff went real crazy, yeah, you probably could do that. But I don't know because you'd still like with those ships, it's like if the ship was totally automated, maybe like all of this stuff was automated and you left humans kind of to their own devices, like shit might get really weird. But like yeah. if, if it was something that like they, they had to jobs. maintain it, like yeah. they have to maintain it and be able to fix the ship. So these people have to be trained and qualified unless it's some like fucking – warhammer 40k mechanicum stuff where they just worship the ship and they're like they, we, we <laughs> apply the holy text of the mechanicum and and it's just like a it's a technical manual and they're like reading off the instructions thou, thou now turn lever to be <laughs> switching <laughs> over air ejectors from but you know and they're just like that's a whole ritual that they do i mean it could be something like they incorporate it into their religion 
Yeah, maybe. Well, like, <laughs> think about Who how knows? much information we've lost in four generations. You know what I mean? Like, even that, like, four generations of humans. Like, you know, like, yeah, we, we know. We have a good idea, but, like, we don't know everything. It's like, now you can find them in the ship, like, the crazy shit that would go on. Well, I, like, mean, they were, I mean, we write stuff down. Like, <laughs> what, did, what, what did we lose in four generations? Yeah, what did we lose in four Tons of stuff. I'm the world's confused. largest ruby. Did I? I little anecdote. That's we lost the world's first. largest ruby. <laughs> I got a, a, a little anecdote. My parents are visiting. There was a news report on today, and it goes, "The world's largest ruby is going for auction." Comes on the screen. My dad goes to my mom. God damn, we got a ruby at home bigger than that. <laughs> and then they go. I look at them and I'm like, I'm obviously of just disdain. And then my dad goes. But we'd never sell it. And then they go, the largest rubies, um, you know, expected to make $30 million at auction. And I turned to them and I was like, you have, <laughs> you're going to sit there and tell me you have a larger ruby or a ru- ruby near as big as the world's largest ruby at home. And he's like, yeah, it was your, it was your grandma's. She wore it on a ring. I was like, it's not the world's biggest ruby. Get out of here. You guys are crazy. Well, it's, this thing was honking. I was like, it's not even close. The world's biggest ruby. million dollars. Well, that's what we lost, right? Like, we we, we don't know where that ruby came from. That, I don't know where but it came that's from. like that's not like information. That's just like a thing. That's like you know. Then what <laughs> if they what have the, the fuck world's made you go there? Yeah, when, how did you get that's to the, the world's, lost, the the world's largest thing. ruby? Okay, but that's the, like <laughs> I didn't lose the knowledge of like well, how no, to like but I'm that little like, fucking no monkey water, playing water, symbols like, in your brain. <laughs> no, like, no, how does no, it just no, come up with that? No, no, <laughs> <The> world's <laughs> fucking largest. <laughs> we lost. We lost. No, 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 we lost so much knowledge. Like what? Like the like the knowledge of where the largest ruby is. No one knows. That was actually the papers that burned in the library. No one knows how my. Grandma came into possession of the world's largest ruby. Right? That's the, the lost knowledge. It's lost. We just we had it. I'm like, well, who, who had it before? How did they get it? Like, this must have been, there must have been some heist. There's gotta be some it can't be that big if it fits on a ring. But it's, like, like, it's, all, hey, it's a honking ring. It's like a Hulk Super Bowl ring. ring. Maybe it's one of those like pimp rings with like three, you know, like three oh, fingers like a f- fitting it. Yeah, a yeah, full oh, yeah. fist oh, ring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, so, well, well, Braden finds the lost. Uh, lost knowledge of the last yeah, four we decades for, we go look for the largest ruby <laughs> uh we're gonna take a short beer break because we gotta recover from this all right we'll be right back
We're back. What else we? did you did you uh, find any other uh, lost technology? Yeah. <laughs> no, just rubies. Find any more lost yeah. lost gemstones? World's largest gemstones? No. Can we get a picture <laughs> of this ru- ruby? Uh, I'll try to get it. Yeah. I'm well, I was telling Dan, I was telling Dan on the break because I looked up the world's largest ruby. So, in order for the ruby my parents have to rival the world's largest ruby, it would have to weigh near or in excess of eight point two pounds. And it's fixed on a ring. Imagine they have that on a ring. <laughs> it's like a fist. Your great it's great like grandma fist size. I just want like remember Armathy. <laughs> <laughs> Your grandma's got an Armathy. Yeah. yeah. No uh, well, that, right, that so also. Um, I guess we talking about something. we were talking about generational travel. But what about what about if you just freeze everyone, shoot them off, unfreeze like them? Walt Disney there. style. Cryogenic. Well, to be honest, yeah. I, I would say that some sort of stasis with an AI running a ship would make the, more sense if you're sending bio, like organic material, like biological matter. Then, because uh, I mean, ideally, it would make more sense to just send AI, like some sort of AI itself. But if you're if you're going to if we haven't merged or something with that, and you're going to send some organics, that to me would be the me- best thing. It's like. Yeah, go for a nap. You wake up. It's been ten thousand years. You're there. No, man. Listen, to ten thousand years. Something. I'm free. And then it's no, time to that from John Spartan. He was aware the whole time. He knew what happened. It was you go crazy. I did. <laughs> you go from John Spartan to fucking Simon Phoenix in no time. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Easy. Go nuts. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be it. Like getting getting around and and you know. Uh, trying to get around that idea or the, the the hurdle that is like transporting humans in a reasonable amount of time and reasonable comfort getting there um i mean we've seen i mean even cryogenic technology right now is like stone age like there's any of it is pretty much They've like frozen people but no one's ever been revived oh but yeah they did no but yeah exactly nobody there are people who are frozen right now and it's like with you know uh, I went, they had that one that one place that like they had like an outage and like a bunch of people like thawed out. D thawed. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, it's like we haven't even perfected or even like close to uh, you know made strides in cryogenic technology. And I, I, it's probably at the bottom of the list. I would think like just just the facts of like having uh, one of the most feasible ways to kind of transport people. But um, as far as like. You know, saying like, okay, we get past that, and then you're like, okay, what? We we're talking about like how how space be, space travel becomes like the, just the every day. Uh, say we have like, you know, now you need to profit off of that. So it's like, what? What if you get money by like space tourism? Like, where are you gonna go? Like, where are you gonna go in your in our just in our solar system? I think would be cool to have like a you know space tours. Like, it would just be really fucking neat. Was it Star Tours? There's like Star Tours and. That's like yeah, a ride at Disney World. That's when you go to see like Gloria Estefan's house and shit like that. I want well, that. Yeah. I mean, yes, but. <laughs> well, you would, just, um, you, would you would have like you would have like around the galaxy like you know maybe if you if you would go fast enough you're like hey, we're we're gonna go for a, a seven day seven night cruise around yeah. Jupiter's moons. I mean, it's it's cool. I mean, I think it's really cool to think about because it? it's like right now we're at like the very tiny stages. You know, it's the it's the Virgin Galactics and the whatever like the that's that's space tourism right now it's it's the very infant stages of just being like oh you get to see like the curvature of the earth essentially (laughs) like that's pretty much all you get to see Um, space tourism right now is basically like back in the day when some guy was like i've made a boat who would like to step onto my boat okay next maybe maybe that's how the reptilians got to earth is because they were able to be frozen because can't isn't the reptiles like frogs and shit that you can freeze there are some and then they come back to life Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, some like, some fish well, too will freeze solid in ice and then dethaw and, and, and come back. I mean, so yeah, is, I guess life can so be brought gene back. Editing? Yeah, mm-hmm. a little gene editing with reptile Kurt Connor situation. Grow back your fucking arm. Next thing you know, you're a lizard. Yeah, got to find where somewhere in between. Yeah. you don't want to be Doctor Kurt. You don't Kurt. want to be trying to turn everybody else on lizards. Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah. He took it too far. It was good for a bit though. He got his arm back. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. He's got to stop uh, it there. Yeah, stop, stop it there. Yeah, stop yeah. it before it becomes a stop. Yeah. Genocidal, genocidal, genocidal maniac, <laughs> genocidal lizard person. 
I don't know. Yeah. Cryogenic freezing, though, is always a, yeah, it's popular sci fi. I just read an article like about not a, not a, great a guy style. that was like trying to like freeze pets and bring them back to life. I gotta fuck it. I don't, I don't think I'm worried. Freeze pets. <laughs> well, I think you're, I think the, you read the article wrong. It was man is killing pets. This 24 year old wants to freeze dead pets and paywall. All right. All right. And paywall. <laughs> and paywall. Who's going to pay Kai for Micah, art? Kai Micah Mills, who's advancing cry- cryonics for pets. Cryonics. cryonics. Cryonics for pets. Some dude in Utah. Okay. Yeah. Of course, it's so you, you pay. You, um, yeah, you could pay for your pet to be frozen, I guess. And maybe. Yeah, but they're already dead. This was, like, maybe dead maybe pets. instead of putting them down, you freeze them right then. I mean, yeah, I think that's how. So some you people, can right? thaw them so they die later. No, yeah, but when they, no, then when you bring them back, you have the medicine and the ability to that's, yeah, whatever I think happened with your pet. That's some we're of talking, the motivation. So we're talking. Nor- this is basically Nora Frost. Yeah. Right. That's what it fucking Mister Freeze was doing the entire time. <laughs> no, for real. Yeah. That's what yeah. he did. Because what yeah. did she have? She had like McGregor syndrome or right, something. Right. Right. Yeah, some kind of. And he, she had some type disease. of fucking incurable disease, disease or something. Yeah. At, Any further? Tech- yeah, any further? Yeah. I mean, that's. I think that's some of the motivation for some of the people that are like getting frozen now. It's like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna fix you later. Uh, well, McGregor syndrome's a son of a bitch. Um, that's what she had. And so, but yeah, putting the. I mean, but freezing perfectly healthy people, and then I mean, the freezing people isn't a problem. It's un. It's unfreezing. It's right the unfreezing. It's like you know the damage that you your can freeze anyone. Freezing is yeah. actually quite easy. Yes. Easy to do. It's, it's the unfreezing part. It's the thawing out part, yeah. which is uh, giving us a uh, pause at this at this time. It's, give, it's giving us some mild inconveniences. Trying. That's to why I still out. think that I just don't. I think cryogenic freezing is like the bottom of the list of stuff that we want to do. It doesn't seem good. <laughs> just right now. The next one on our mm. list, though, is actually theoretically possible. The Einstein Rosen Bridge, or more commonly referred to as a wormhole. Points through, points through space. I think it was Einstein came up with the idea like a white and a black hole would be connected through t- like points in space, and then so it's it's a theoretical. I mean, it's Einstein. He's the king. He's the king <laughs> of relativity. So at least it has plausibility. But when it breaks down, as they always say, yes, these things could exist, but they're on such a, like a microscopic size that you probably couldn't find them but it, as the universe expands perhaps the wormholes have expanded with it and there possibly could be a point in space where you just pop in and you pop out at a different point in the universe i think or yeah. like these, and these holes are drifting in space too or they are do you think they're fixed points it uh, uh so we got to bring Einstein back in his cryogenic. <laughs> I, I think the farthest they've gotten is that like the math checks out. Like mathematically, I'm pretty sure like they've worked out like a wormhole could exist. Like that wormhole, like a, a you know, a, a, a somehow a two having two so yeah, points in two space po- joined points. by a you bridge a mouth, that pres- m- moves mouth and a yeah. bum hole. Connected by a throat. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> same, same, but different. Um, you go in one, you come out the other. Yeah. But the thing they haven't gotten through yet is that it's, it, it, there's, yeah, they are very infinites- infinitesimally small. And then and. anything that goes through it will shut it. It'll just go, as soon as any piece of matter, like, enters into it, it's gone. Like, well, it's they're, yeah, they're said to, said to be Because it's going somewhere else. <laughs> shut out the other it's side. Fun. Well, they're, they said to be ex- they're, they're said to be extremely unstable, so you would need some type of like some type of matter ray or something, something right. that could like freeze it and in, in freeze it from collapsing. And then you'd be able to enter in, and come and, back out. Yeah. Well, is that, and that, could that be like what we talked about before, about like having some sort of ball of energy around the ship. Well, no, cause it's like you, you have to, what it essentially is like, it's because the wormhole is like, it, it, it wants to close. Like it wants to, it wants to shut. Right. So that's where theoretically is like where you would have some type of like scientists are basically thinking that if you had some type of X matter, antimatter for better, you know, lack of a better concept or whatever is basically you want something that goes inside the wormhole and pushes it out. And so like, and therefore like stabilizing it and keeping it open, like it won't be able to shut because the anime and like, you know, yeah. Like Zell was kind of saying like, in sci-fi things you'd have like an antimatter ray that you beam or something that you shoot through and then keep the wormhole open um something to manipulate that and keep keep it 
Do we know uh, what stable. happens when it closes, though? Like, do we not? Like, well, again, we they're, going, they're theoretical. Yeah. They're theoretical. Yeah, like, how do we know it's not going somewhere? Well, the, it's, it's theoretical. It is going somewhere, but the theoretical part too is they're like microscopic, like a pinhole or less. Like you couldn't never get anything through it. But maybe you could get instead of matter, maybe you could get signal, some type of frequency. Like so, you're you could like yeah. communicate communicate through space instantaneously or whatever in a much shorter amount of time, even if you couldn't jump through the hole. But I, did, I was reading some because I've always thought wormholes like man, this is like this could be this is it. This on like our best scientists have come up with this the, like possibility that these things exist. So let's go with it. So recently they said something called it's not dark matter or uh, antimatter. They call it like exotic matter, which is a theoretical state of matter that you would need this type of matter in order to stabilize the world. And that's right. just pretty recent. So you need some type of something that we don't know anything about. Stabilize a wormhole, which may not if it exist. exists. If it exists, yeah, exactly. <laughs> theoretically, uh, it's it theoretically with our math and stuff. They're like, it's possible. Yeah, it's very small. But if we could find yeah. the technology to either expand them or freeze them or whatever, yeah. that would that would be the best way through the universe. You it's like they do the enough. math and they're like, they, if you have this variable and you put this in here, and this variable is for a a, a type of matter that may or may not exist, and you put this in here, it works. It doesn't shut down all the, <laughs> It doesn't destroy everything. You just you just got to find that one yeah the one piece. Um, but yeah, but the most, like, that would make the most sense for if you're trying to traverse the galaxy. Like uh, if you could find a point between that you could just instantaneously you teleport. You don't you don't need the fan. You could get to space in a rocket, fly through the hole, and you pop out. But it's like portal. You just would go through and you're out the other end. Whoop, you've, yep, you've, just you've traversed. But I guess that's band. another thing. That's another thing about this though is they're not sure if that the throat, let's say, is straight or does it? You go in and you do some weird. So maybe it's not spiral. a throat. Maybe it's more of like an intestine. You're more yeah, long intestine, small. Or small, small and large, large, small and large. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you just twist around in there. And then you got to get your way to the colon, and then you get stuck in there. You get stuck in between. Now you're in limbo. Well, you need the fucking uh, oh, mesentery. Is that what it is? Uh, <laughs> the um, uh, like oh, like you mentioned before, the uh, the idea that that communication would always be a problem as well. Like once you get to a certain point, like your communication isn't going to be instantaneous anymore. Um, You're sending signals that will take, you know, hours, if not days. And like some places in cases it would be days and, you know, it could even be like years if you're far enough away uh, to get back to earth. And which this is the kind of part that always interests me is like, once you get past all the science and stuff and of getting out into space, you know, you break it down into the more like human aspects and like, the politics of space and it's like what happened how long until how long until humanity splinters into its various factions of being like well you know earth is no longer the center of our our species and we move on to to you know when when do we get you know space pirates and stuff essentially we find a a planet we find america finds a planet it's just called america not earth just yeah not earth not earth 2.0 just america america 2 (laughs) <laughs> well it just seems like it seems like that would have to be a priority that we uh and i know a lot of uh science fictions will call it like an ansible or something instantaneous communication that to me seems like it would have to be a priority because if you left and you're basically cutting off for such a delay and the delay is only getting longer and longer the further you you get away um you know at what point you know you're you, not so much expanding the human race as you're just starting another human race. You know what I mean? Like, I think the goal would be to have that connectivity if you're going to be a uh, spacefaring. It's like, oh, yeah, cool. There's humans everywhere. None of them have any idea what each other's doing. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> it's like instantaneous communication and travel. Like, because it's yeah. like, how, are you, how do you enforce laws? Like, a, a central governing body, like, how do you enforce their laws and their regulations without, like, instantaneous travel? It's like, hey, this, uh, this colony isn't... Uh, isn't enforcing their like safe worker union rules or something like that. So we got to send out, we got to send out a Jedi. You know, we got to do an audit. Like you got to send out an auditor to this region of the galaxy. They're like, well, it's going to take like seven to eight months to get them out there or whatever. And you know, it's like by the, or, you know, it's going to take if like a year it. if they get out there. Yeah. yeah and then like the a, project's done already and countless deaths. I, I can't imagine the scale of the bureaucracy that it would like to run an entire galactic empire would be just 
absolutely mind-boggling <laughs> so much pa- so much paperwork stuff. we'd have we'd have to have an entire planet just to store like paper records course on well, we wouldn't <laughs> have paper records on. at that point time. you need paper well. records because the yeah. government always needs paper you always need hard copies uh, but uh, that's when will when sure. will our civilization truly become paperless <laughs> That's the real question. Yeah, yeah never. It's it's. That's, they keep saying it's we're going paperless, and it's like, nope. You got to keep we're, these. We're hard, you got to print all these documents out at the end of the end of the year, and then you got to keep them for seven to eight years in some warehouse. It, it'll. <laughs> to me, I'm like I, but I do think the the logical thing in my brain when I think about it, I go, it would it makes more sense to me that by the time we're doing this is that we just have delayed communication. Like when we send out, that will be the first step is that we have days, weeks, months, whatever that communications goes until that, like till we figure out. But I always, I think the traveling there will come first and foremost rather than the, okay, well now how do we transmit information? Cause I, I, I feel like that is an easier hurdle to. to Well, it's like most, most colonies would be most colonies would probably be pretty reliant on earth in the early days because it's like you have to get food you have to get stuff that's grown you know, supplies with manufacturing and stuff yeah and when a colony becomes self-sufficient at that point like you know what would be that always interests me is like how to like how would you become an independent at that point you just say like hey we're we're a new country get our own governing body or whatever you know like a, a space colony just says like hey we're not we're not part of you anymore your laws don't apply here we're making our we and make in the comes rules in comes the empire buddy we've and, been to texas <laughs> yeah <laughs> there is but no yeah. zoning laws in texas that was a big <laughs> change for me yeah it's like get rid of the zoning laws a walkable cities like in and on centauri 2 or something you know it's like that's what we want <laughs> no more zoning laws <laughs> We're tired of these. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's interesting to, to think about like what would like what would human civilization look like if you're just like it's the new it's the new wild west you know new new world new I mean they are literally new worlds uh, out there and like when does the when does Earth become defunct when does it like well you're not you're not charging me anymore you know and then do we do you nuke them. <laughs> Like, what do you do? <laughs> Get rid of them. You know, well, do you set it, it like, do you, I, you know, a pacification I would, force? I, I would theorize that, like, if we have, if, if, if we get to the technology where we have instantaneous travel or, 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 or the ability to travel near speed of light, if we get to that technology, like, even a weapon, like, you send, you send an object propel an object just into a planet at like near light speed fucking goodbye like earth like you instantly have like earth ending technology without having to do me like, oh, yeah. i just got to propel i just got to propel this rod at well, yeah, light if speed we, and your planet's fucking done well yeah you or you have mean? like if we you know like we said exotic or antimatter bomb like you just drop that onto a planet and essentially just like rip it apart at the subatomic level <laughs> like in no time right it was a doctor device like for mender's game or whatever um well, and just antim- explode a whole planet yeah there there you go antimatter that's the next propulsion isn't it like one gram of antimatter is like the equivalent of like a like a the little boy bomb I th- atomic I theor- bomb theor- theoretically yeah theoretically, like, like one gram like one little drop theoretically if you could somehow cl- cl- collide Part the matter and antimatter it would create that much energy like a tiny little speck and then it's like yeah and then like do you do you use that like why i'm just wondering like how do you do you like sanction the whole planet it's just like we're not gonna send you any more stuff no more aid I think like, that's, you, I think you lay like, siege to it yeah no yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's weird you would get medieval you would get medieval because you'd be like well the, the other things like we're not gonna we just kill the whole planet we're just gonna fucking imp- like siege them until they give up I like your populate like and even at like what point it's like I always think about this when you have like these giant galactic things it's like all the planets like wouldn't be equally like, you know, like we have here on earth right now like you have you or we you know it was a fear for a while where it's kind of like overpopulation which is a problem but um you know you don't think about it as much right now but you know if you if you're able to like move people to like different planets it's like you would maybe have like three or four sit like big cities like on each planet and then it would just be resources like the whole rest of the planet would just be 
yeah, farmland, resources. you know, farmland or, you know, mining or, or whatever. Uh, resources. Greenhouses, yeah, yeah. food production, minerals, yeah, stuff like and that. If you did set up a, any type of colony on any other planet, uh, that place would have to be self-sufficient. It couldn't be relying on intergalactic trade, I guess. Yeah, unless you had, I mean, if we had instantaneous travel or teleportation, you know, that, which That's is true. Kind if of you could, about. if you could stock uh, other planets, like uh, other civilizations with the same, like, uh, two day delivery, like all grocery stores, like every two days, they would run out of food in two days. Yeah. If you could do that, then yeah, you could starve them out. You could siege them. But it's but like, not- yeah, yeah, you can, I don't know. Yeah, once they become self sufficient and once they're like, whatever, it's like, I wonder if there's going to be like, I. I mean that this all this is all like predicated on the the idea that maybe we have some type of government set up to, ready to kind of that everybody isn't blasting off into space and they're like cobbled together spaceships and they're just going everywhere. But instead, it's like a well regulated, you know, colonization effort of some kind. You know, like That's what you hope or less you're gonna have cannibal planets. You know that people are going out and like government subsidized. Uh, colonization efforts that it's like okay we're going out there you're going to establish this this is going to be your these are going to be your um, uh, your quotas like you have to do we're sending you to this planet that's going to be uh, that is by our you know by our auditors and whatever has been shown that it has this much resources so we're going to need you to turn out this much in order to make it profitable <laughs> so therefore you know uh, but I was. I find that stuff interesting. Maybe not everybody finds it, but I'd be like, "Ah, oh, is, that, is that how it would work?" Well, it's it's, <laughs> it's even weird to me, like of how like when like when you would get a civilization to that point where you're inter like like spanning galaxies and different planets, of like it, it it at some levels it would get it would feel more primitive between the, the, the between them. yeah like you would, you'd have you'd like you'd be living like, like an 18th century life like on these planets yeah. you'd have like cars and stuff like that but everybody would be all spread out your neighbor would be like yeah it's 10 it's, miles it's, down the road it's, it's weird to think lots of space like, yeah you're just like oh there's nothing here like we have we have no infrastructure we have no cars we have no nothing right They're like this 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 place is completely barren and we're just like oh we're pioneers now but with yeah. fucking limitless technology at our fingertips yeah fairly advanced technology and you're just like but you're still taking like boats and stuff up the up river like you know these rivers Portaging. and stuff like whatever <laughs> yeah like yeah. it'd just be nuts it'd be just kind of uh an interesting thing and it's like yeah i don't like how would you keep track of everything is it i i find the logistics are probably a little bit more mundane to most people yeah. but i'm like i find them like incredibly interesting <laughs> to be like okay this is how this is how we're going to you know regulate even zoning laws yeah are they gonna like are there gonna be zoning laws like how do you build your city like, you know. can't well, have a legal would... suite on this property <laughs> are you, are you uh, which side of the road are you gonna Those drive on earth laws what what side of the road do you live with? I... what side of the road do you drive on is it determined by like if if you know british people land there or, like versus like american I mean, yeah, we drive on this side of the road <laughs> well it's weird it's weird because again you would have like because we we have like a, let's say just for better word factions of humans on earth that don't get along and wouldn't agree on rules and it would 100 percent be like that so i would see that like you would have groups of like you would have a base rules like these are the rules now and when you get there you guys can vote to change them vote for your government but sure. then you would have also like space putin where he's like these are the rules right <laughs> yeah it, it depends on what shape uh a government with like a governing body of space would would take i assume like uh, well you would have to think you would have to have something else better than we have here because it's just what we have going on on earth does not seem like it would translate well to uh, at all to uh, like a multi planet species like not even great. in the slightest it, it feels like it would just be pandemonium It'd be interesting i just yeah if you can i mean probably not live to see it but it's like yeah it's just I'm like sure we're how... a few years away from that <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Once we, yeah wormholes coming yeah. uh 2026 like, like no, for, forget forget wormholes we're going with quantum teleportation Boom. that's the that's the Super. ultimate ultimate way to get around instantaneous i have no idea how it works but i i know it's theoretically pro- plausible uh, yeah <laughs> and that's just what you just you just fucking just dream you're somewhere else and you appear there it's pretty much like, yeah like matters existing in two points at the same time and right. you can teleport them instantaneously I mean, you'd have to, yeah. I mean it's in star trek it's essentially it's like it's like launching data it's basically data like is you're just you're 
kind of just like turning your body into energy data, whatever. And then you're shooting it out at the speed of light, broadcasting it to a location and then reassembling it there. Um, which is like, even then it would still kind of take, you're only, you're still limited by like, I guess it would be like the speed of light kind of, um, but no, still, I think, yeah. I think quantum entanglement, like quantum. En- well, I mean, it would be like, quantum is instant. I think right. no matter where, I don't right. think it has anything so, to do with the laws of, for the speed of light, I mean, and that's why we're, like, we're right? getting Maybe into some, some fucking the ship of thesis here, where it's like, is it the same person? Is it a different person? <laughs> <laughs> They're both neither the person. They're both they are the person. Yeah, you, what happens when there's two of you? Which one is the real one? Like, Every time you teleport, you prestige yourself. Yeah. Well, that's a, a weird thing. Is like because <laughs> if you if you completely if you completely disassemble a car and then move it and then reassemble, you're gonna lose it, a few. You're gonna lose a few screws. <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like and then you put it back together like is this, is it the same car what and then yeah and then what happens when somebody's just quantum teleporting themselves to one planet is it a population of that just that one person you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> it's put the your... planet totally populated by Braden's. just like <laughs> no you're gonna you're gonna put on your pants the next week the pants you wore to take apart that car and you're gonna find a couple bolts in the pocket and you go hmm oh shit I wonder if those are important <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, fuck. There's a lot, lot of, lot of fun theoretical ways that we could get around. Will we see it in our lifetime where they imagine this? Like that's the huge breakthrough one year. Just like we know quantum entanglement works, and we can send physical objects to anywhere. Game changer. Well, first, we I, gotta first we gotta find a cleaner source of energy readily available. But. I think I think we'll have a, a proven theory of like some where we're like this is. This is how we do it. I think we'll figure out some way of of travel that we don't quite grasp now in our lifetime that definitely changes things in our lifetime. I, will the will we be putting it into practice in our lifetime? Probably not. But I think we'll have it where they're like, this is this is the next step. And I think we'll know it in our lifetime, or at least I think we'll. I hope to. Or maybe that's just what I'll imagine that in like you know like the like the blackbird. You no, know, it was a UFO. In 20 years from now, we figure out all this stuff that's been happening in the last, like, 15 years. All these military videos is just, like, some new... We just got it. We got this new tech. Were, it, was us all, like, it was us all along. All along, like, motherfuckers. Earth's best scientists were working in secret. Man, On this new... On this new yeah. Uh, yeah. Just like the, uh, the new Manhattan Project in secret. Everyone was working on a little piece. They didn't even know they were yeah. working on it. And then they came up with this new propulsion. And only a handful new. And then eventually it comes tumbling out. And they're like, yeah, and they're like putting the astronauts on there. They're like, yeah, we're sending them to the moon. Psych, we're sending them to Alpha Centauri. Ah, peace, <laughs> losers. They're like, all right, in this craft, we're going to send you to the moon. Psych, you're already there. <laughs> uh, like, no, it, it, you know what? You're though? going like, to the Crab Nebula, suckers. <laughs> as, disappointing, as disappointing as it would be that these aren't extraterrestrial lives and knowing that we're still right now alone, we haven't been contacted. I would be equally cool. Be like, that's fucking cool that we have this ability now. Like, we we didn't even realize that we could do this. And like, we did it all. They didn't give us no tech. That would be cool. That would be a cool. Uh, I'd be equally excited about that. I think. Anyways, I, I think we've we've gone through most of the main ones. So if anyone out there has a theory, yeah, that you've been sitting on, then you you don't want to tell the government. You don't want, you, you got it. You tell us first. Have I ever told up? you this guy I know, Gary? This guy I know, Gary. I think he, I've talked about Gary once before. Yeah, he is, tell, he tell is, us, Remind us. He has. He says he he gets con. He's he's a contactee. Oh, he that's says right. he, yeah. he gets, says he gets gets contacted, mm-hmm. and it's every couple of years or something. And they give him another piece of the plan, and he has drawings for some sort of drive. He has them, and he's like, I don't really know how it works. And then he's like, I sometimes wonder if other people have other pieces of it. Right? Uh, and, he, and he's just like, and he's like, you should go on, you should go on Reddit. I, yeah, uh, he's a, he's an older dude. He's a, I don't even he has trouble with the computer. He's still playing Sim City 2000. That's I, awesome. I mean, why would you play any other one? Like, yeah, it's a great yeah. game. Like, yeah, new ones. <laughs> it, it, city's just meticulous. I'm like, oh, it's a good city. But so like, yeah, you know, maybe maybe it's a, you know contact thing. We we do have these these things already. Maybe they're given like that, right? And the government's collecting these people that are having these things, getting these pieces. Of some sort of message that's out there. But can you imagine that? Like, just like random humans, tons of them. Do you just have a piece? You just don't even know that. And then you get enough of you together. You're like, 
you look, you know, when they say like, oh, sometimes a fresh set of eyes, like maybe you already had that information in and that's why you were needed to be on the project. Like you, you were the sole person that could, you know, put that puzzle piece in together. You just move, yeah, you just move that, that one piece. All yeah, like, what if you, what if you turn that? And they're like, oh, I didn't know. Never thought, of that. thought to turn it. So, I have an interesting thought I had, but <laughs> anyways, yeah, let us know. What are your thoughts are? Yeah, you which side of the road do we drive on when we colonize new planets? Which side <laughs> of the road do we drive on? I want to know. What system of governments <laughs> will we use? Uh, what will the zoning laws be? The first, no, the, you know, the first plan is going to be Wild West pirate law. It's going to be. Oh, fucking what's the madness. water quality? What's the water quality uh, like regulations going to be? <laughs> gonna be yeah, who's testing? Grills in it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, everyone's going to need a life straw on that planet. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, drinking uh, no mystery liquid. <laughs> All right, that was fun. Let's uh, let's move on to theorite of the week. There's new, there's now a new easiest way to get theorite of the week. New yeah. one. You gotta be gotta uh-huh. be part of the show, and then you gotta have an offspring. <laughs> yeah. and they uh, become you a have, of the No, week. you gotta have a nepo baby. <laughs> <laughs> this week's theorite of the week is Bowen Ian. Bloomfield, newest member of Andrew's family. Woo. Andrew and Jess, he- happy, healthy, sleeping, yeah. getting some sleep. Found out where I donated all my hair to. <laughs> Came out with a full head, didn't he? A big, thick full head. Full head of hair, his back, his arms, everything. He's got a little tail. <laughs> he's a saying. <laughs> For Does sure. he have a little yeah, tail? I know he's good. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's little got bigger? a little tuft of hair right on his fucking That's above his ass. Awesome. Yeah, he's, he's got every ounce of my Lebanese jeans. <laughs> all of them. All, they all translated all over. Them. It's funny because my first kid doesn't look a thing like me. So this one I've made up for it now. He's going to take but over yeah, the fam- family business? Has to be. Selling, he'll be selling pickle babies in no time. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. is the pickle baby. Don't worry. The number one good price will continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious though. My kid, like my first kid, Niall, my firstborn, calls him ugly all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so You're just ugly. hanging out and be like, Dad. Bowen's ugly. All right, thanks, buddy. Like, kind of looks like you, so. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's funny. Uh, He's ugly. Yeah, it's, dude, I was crying the first no, time. They'll, so. they'll be battling before no time. I got some good fucking Nile stories for uh, After Hours for boys. Awesome. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're All not right. on, if you don't have access to After Hours, that's because you're not on our Patreon. What, what the, the hell are you Patreon? doing? <laughs> what are Better you doing? Get to it. Figure it out. You got to know by now. You go to alientheorist.com, you hit that support tab, you get early ad free access, all the bonus stuff. We're working for you almost for free. If you, if you donate on Patreon, you give us a couple bucks. We appreciate it. This week's newest supporters, we've been uh, as we've been busy with a couple babies and having been doing regular case files. So if you, some people message, Wait, you haven't read my name, it's because we've, we've locked them. They've been locked up till now. So these are the Patreon supporters from this previous month. We have not read any of them, and that's our bad. But this week's we, new supporters, Brayden, started off. We got Jose Galina, Inktress, Nick Fell, Cody, Interstellar, <laughs> and Chris Langley. We got El Bubzo, El Z- Aslonix, Kylie Mead, Forbidden underscore Snowman, Lord Vampire, and Ape Underwater. We've got Calm, just Calm, just just one word. Uh, Remon or Remon, Remon, Ape Remon. Underwater. That guy's a beauty. I think he's back. I think we uh, met him in Austin. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Ape Underwater uh, got on twice, little fucker. Ape oh. Underwater. Uh, you've got Ryan, uh, another Ryan, <laughs> and Richard Robbins, and then we got Jordan Boggs, Moosh Life, Craig Perks, Kevin King Kuzkos, and Alan Howard. Ba, 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 boom! Thank you very much for supporting the show. We appreciate and, it. And as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. See you in after hours.
after hours. No, I had a thought. I thought this before at the grocery store, and then we were talking about supply chains. And I very, isn't it mind-boggling that in two days the grocery stores are out of food if they didn't get restocked? Like all, all, all 